Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at all of the new changes coming in the very latest version of CMU, version 1.15.1. This new version is now available to download for all CMU patrons and since it was released on the 30th of December, this of course means that it will go into free public release for everyone else on January the 6th. Now, in the event that you yourself had already downloaded an earlier CMU 1.15.1 version, please make sure to download the very latest hotfix version, which at the time of making this video was 1.15.1c. This 1.15.1c version fixes several bugs that were present in the initial release of this CMU emulator version. Now that we have all of that information out of the way, we can jump into the actual main topic of this video, all of the new changes we're going to be seeing in this new release. First of all, we have seen a very, very welcome change to how graphics packs are going to be downloaded both now and in the future of CMU Emulator. In this new version, they have added a button that will automatically download and update all of your graphics packs to their latest version from inside the native UI of CMU Emulator itself. The usage of this new system really is as easy as it sounds. You simply click Download Latest Community Graphics Packs. CMU will then download and extract all of these graphics packs to your graphics pack folder for you to fully utilize in any of your required games. These graphics packs are then going to be stored within a separate graphics pack folder titled Downloaded Graphics Packs, adding even further segregation between downloaded graphics packs and mod packs that were added in the previous CMU version. This new graphics pack downloading system is going to make it even easier for us to utilize and manage any of the mods we have installed for our games on CMU Emulator. The upgrades to the graphics pack system do not end there though, they have also also added the ability for CMU to now see graphics packs that are in subdirectories and subfolders. This new ability is going to make it even easier to debug issues and will hopefully help with any installation errors that new users of CMU Emulator may run into. This change that separates graphics packs from mod packs is definitely a welcome one, especially so when you consider that the updating method for getting a new graphics packs is to delete the old ones and to replace with the new. In the past CMU version, to upgrade your graphics packs and keep all of your mod packs intact, you would basically have to highlight all of your graphics packs, then you'd have to manually trawl through all of your graphics packs, deselecting any of the mods you did not want to have CMU delete. Thankfully, since we now have this new graphics pack downloading and install system, we do not have to worry about this at all anymore. Now that we've covered graphics packs, let's move on to some GX2 or some GBU based fixes we're going to be seeing in this new CMU version. Now I know pretty much all of you are going to be wondering what's happening with the Vulkan API backend that, as we already know, is currently in development for CMU emulator. Unfortunately, at this point in time, we have no further news about this API. Anytime we ask about it, we basically get told that yes, it is proceeding well as planned, and since they have implemented the new texture cache in CMU 1.15.0 and CMU 1.14.0, this is definitely proceeding on schedule. As I always do guys, if there is any new or up-to-date news on this API or any news at all about CMU, I will let you know as soon as I possibly can. Okay, so onto some GPU updates we are going to be seeing in this new CMU version. They have added the Intel No Legacy command as the defaulted version and mode for utilization in CMU. Basically, what this means is if you're using an Intel integrated GPU on your CPU, you are going to have much, much better out of the box performance and compatibility for CMU emulator. Please do be aware that if you are using a very, very old Intel integrated CPU, by very, very old, I mean anything from the past six to seven years or before that, you are going to need to use the legacy command in order to get the best performance and as I said, compatibility out of CMU. If you're having any trouble getting this set up on your computer, do not hesitate to contact me over on Discord and I'll help you out absolutely and no problem. The next GX2 optimization we have seen is going to be an absolute godsend for any NVIDIA GPU users out there. If you're not aware of it, NVIDIA GPUs are basically not able to use or load pre-compiled shaders in CMU emulator at all. Pretty much every single NVIDIA GPU user has had to use the pre-compiled ignored setting in order to completely alleviate any kind of shader cache or shader related stutter. In 1.15.1 however, they have given us a custom path to NVIDIA's GL shader cache which is going to allow you to save and completely load all of your shader caches from one singular location and one singular GL shader cache. 
this new shader cache, which I am myself going to dub the Uber shader cache, is going to be located in your shader cache folder, the driver folder, and then it will be located inside of the NVIDIA folder there. This new feature is an absolute godsend, and after hours and hours of testing, I can confirm that it works absolutely perfectly. Regardless of how many times you shut down or restart your computer, or regardless of how many times you use any other OpenGL application, this shader cache is going to get loaded absolutely perfectly every time. This basically means that you are never going to have to wait around for your shader cache to fully compile from the start ever again. Huge praise really has to be given to the CMU developers for implementing this fix. I can imagine that it was an absolutely massive pain in the ass to implement. Okay, let's move swiftly on once again and take a look at even more improvements coming in this new CMU version. Let's concentrate on input changes for now. They have completely replaced the existing Wiimote libraries with CMU's very own implementation. According to CMU's developers, this should bring slightly better performance when using Wiimotes, better support for Wiimote extensions, and since this is their own implementation, it should be much easier for them to maintain and fix any bugs that may crop up in the future. Staying on input changes, Wiimotes now include the connected extension type in their name in the input settings window. They have fixed issues with controller profile saving and loading when using a certain UI languages. They have added support for native Wiimote classic controller extensions, and they have completely fixed the blow mic microphone button input, which was slightly broken in 1.15.0. Thanks to these input changes, they have also made changes to the pad score, which has fixed acceleration values for Wiimotes. Let's move swiftly on to some audio changes we're going to be seeing in this version. They have added an SND user 2.rpl HLE implementation. This new implementation has fixed many VC or virtual console titles from having sound or audio bugs. They have fixed incorrect volume and delta calculation in the original SND user profile and they have also added the API for set voice sample address. They have also merged CMU's SND core and SND core 2 driver code. This has allowed them to drastically simplify all of the audio code within CMU for much better handling on their part. And hopefully for us the end user we will eventually get a much much better surround option for audio once they implement it at some point in the future. To cap things off they have fixed some other miscellaneous crashing bugs for example, in relation to the new overlay that CMU now has, they fixed a crash that could occur when the overlay was enabled, but no stats were selected, and they have also fixed several render state corruptions. Now, it may not mean a lot to you guys, but they have also given us an improved version of the debugger for CMU emulator. If you're not aware of it, it is due to this debugger that we have seen all of the improvements to FPS++, the graphics pack that allows dynamic FPS, and indeed, 60 FPS gameplay of Breath of the Wild in a CMU. So that's pretty much it for all of these upgrades and updates to CMU emulator. Looking back at this emulator's progress in the last 12 months alone, it has definitely come a long way and with the advent of the Vulkan API and its implementation hopefully in the near future, I think we can all agree that CMU emulator has got a lot to give us and even more to offer us in the coming year. Let me know down in the comment section what your favourite feature added to CMU emulator this year was. You can also let me know what your favourite feature update of this new release version also is. If I myself had to pick one, I would definitely have to say that the layered FS mod system for this emulator is one of my favourite updates, especially so when you consider just how easy it is to make these brand new mod packs, especially so when you consider the amount of talented modders there are out there in the Wii you and CMU modding community and just how many awesome mods there are for all of your favourite games like Mario Kart 8, Smash 4, Splatoon and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This Linkle mod I'm currently using in this video is just one of the amazing mods I've been showcasing in the last few weeks and hopefully in 2019 we'll see even more progress and even more awesome mods released. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank all of you guys for watching, liking and subscribing to my channel in the past year. It really does warm my heart to see how awesome you guys are as a community and how much each and every one of you has helped both the community here on YouTube and over on Discord itself grow in the past 12 months alone. So from BSOD Gaming, I'd like to wish all of you a very, very happy new year. 
As always guys, cheers for checking out this video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.